Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, April 14th, and it is a glorious day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Sunny, a little bit of clouds, about 56 degrees or something. It's going to get into the 70s. Spring is here, and, uh, and the rain has stopped, which is good, but we need the rain, so let's not... Anyway... <laughs> So today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm uh, I'm actually going to do the first smoke of a, a pipe that I made, and show you some some other pipes and talk a little bit about some of the uh, the fun stuff I've been doing here in the shop. But uh, let's let's start off by getting that pipe loaded up and we'll talk a bit about it. You've seen it. I think I showed this off last week, maybe the week prior. Um, finished it. No, I almost. Well, I don't remember when I finished it. But here she is. Uh, this is the one where I tried the new. Uh, chemical staining method to try to bring out the uh, the grain a bit better and uh, it's got a rather wild colored acrylic stem because I'm trying to use up um, bits and ends of acrylic uh, since I know this is just kind of an experimental pipe I've been experimenting with a, quite a few things the, the drilling methods I put a bowl coating on this one and I'll tell you why I don't know if you can see that or not but it's black um, so played around with some bowl coating uh, ideas and, and uh, found one that I like and I'll tell you why it's got a bowl coating on it in, in, in a few minutes. But uh, yeah, a lot of, a lot of uh, experiment in this guy. But uh, let's see how she performs. So I've got uh, my giant can oak uh, haunted bookshop, which is what I use to break in pipes. It's kind of silly to say that because it's like what I smoke 90% of the time. But that's important to me. I think that having something that's consistent, that you, that you know well, and that you can sort of assess the performance of the pipe is, is the most important thing to use when you're breaking it in. If you do that, then you'll, you'll know when the, how the pipe's performing and when it sort of settles in and starts to be your pipe. So I try to always first 10, maybe 20 smokes in a pipe will be haunted bookshop. After that, I'll, I'll use it for anything. I'm not really a guy that dedicates pipes to any particular blend, although there are pipes that, you know, if I'm if I'm going to have a Virginia Flake, there are pipes that I know like Virginia Flake, and I'll choose them. If I'm going to have a Burley blend, sometimes there are pipes that I know work really well with Burley blends, but, of course, I smoke a lot of Burley blends, and i got to smoke all the pipes, so... Yeah. Oh, the life of a... Pipe smoker. All right, so we're gonna get this lit up. Thank you, Signal Man Tony. And let's see. What I'm particularly interested in here is the uh, the way the airway performs. Thank you, Tamper Tantrum. Isn't that beautiful? I, I saw that when he put it up for sale and just had to had to buy it. It's blood wood, and that, that's all hand carved. Jeff does wonderful work. Um, yeah, so I'm paying attention to the airway uh, because I drilled this one a little bit differently. And any flavor that I get off that bowl cutting. Uh, the reason I drilled it differently is I've been I've been working on ways to make it easier to make these saddle stems without worrying about having to without worrying about possibly sanding through to the airway and so it's still a tapered airway but it's tapered a little bit differently. Just to provide a little more meat in this region here where it's thinning down. Can you see it's actually a fairly thin saddle stem. Hopefully you can see that. So far, so good. So the reason this has a bowl coating actually has nothing to do with this pipe. This is cane rod pipes number three. So I've got pipe-like object, which is technically number zero. And then I've got my little Demi Lovat. Number two went into the auction last year, and, and uh, that's off in a new home, uh, which makes me very nervous because there's only number two. And this is number three. There was a big gap between number two and number three uh, because I got off doing other things and uh, 
took me a while to get back to it. But there's been a bit of an explosion lately. So this being number three, I'm only numbering the ones that come from a block of briar. So if I if I take a raw block of briar and turn it into a pipe, which is what I did here, uh, that gets a number. I also have some of these pre-phrased stumbles that I talked about before. And I wish I had brought one over here with me. You know what? I'm going to go get one. Don't go away. Okay, I will probably edit that out, but this is a um, pre phrased stummel, and you can see it doesn't have an airway drilled, but it does have a tobacco chamber grilled. And this one was a particular challenge because of that square shank. And uh, I think I showed this to you a while back. And these are in varying degrees of quality. And I bought these because I wanted to experiment with the freehand drilling method. And, uh, you know, it'd be kind of fun to play with the shapes and stuff. So I don't count these. These are just sort of fun things to do. So I made a couple of those. And I showed you a billiard I made a while back. And when I started smoking that, I realized... This briar, because it's old, this is probably uh, the factory that was making these probably shut down in the 70s, maybe 80s. And uh, so it's old briar. It's very dry. And it turns out that the the briar burns. Uh, not, not to the point where I worry about burnout, but it really imparts a flavor to the, uh, to the smoke. And... I think a bowl coating will help with that. So that's why I started playing with those. And you know, it is it's a controversial topic for pipe makers and well not for pipe makers really, but for pipe smokers. <laughs> it's a controversial topic. I've come to appreciate bowl coatings and uh yeah, I've, I've sort of I've sort of wound up. It depends on the coating that's used, but if it's a good neutral flavored coating, I think it's a good idea. But we won't get into that. And by the way, so far I'm not getting any flavor off of this except on a bookshop, so that makes me happy. And it seems to be performing quite nicely. Yay! So, I had one of these that I wanted to play with, but I couldn't decide if I wanted to do that first or a billiard first and I thought well let me keep up the momentum that I've got with number three so I did take another raw block of briar and made this fellow here so this is number four and it's a billiard what I focused on on this one was the um, this area in here. I don't know what it's called, but that transition between the shank and the stem. That was a little bit clunky on some of my earlier ones. I don't know if I can show you on this one now without pouring um, ash all over myself, but it just isn't, you know, I'll take a risk here. It just doesn't, um, the neck doesn't come in enough down here, in my humble opinion. So. I worked on that more on this one. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, in doing so, I wound up making the shank too thin. So this is a little bit odd in terms of proportions. But again, I was really focused on that shaping problem. And that's the thing. Each one of these that I do, I've got a different thing that I'm focusing on, trying to perfect a particular part of it. And the other stuff just kind of comes along. I haven't yet tried to make one where I'm like really carefully measuring out all the proportions and making sure that it is a true classic billiard in terms of the proportions i'm more concerned about the shape and sort of getting the process done so you know a billiard that dimension should be roughly that dimension and clearly that's too short and that's too long but i think it'll it'll work and uh again this guy's drilled a little differently so that's number four gotta make ten I'm just having a ball with it. I really am. It's 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 one of the most. Um, I mean, I've had a lot of hobbies. Um, 
this one, there's something about, I like working on small things and I like taking on challenges and I'll, I'll tell you about a challenge in a minute. Um, so this has just been a blast. I've really enjoyed this process. I'm looking forward to it continuing. So, the next thing, and I did this yesterday, so I'm kind of proud of the fact that I did this in one day. I took one of these, and I turned it into this little uh, nose warmer. Now, this is not finished yet. I still need to, uh, obviously, do the final sanding and whatnot. The stem is finished. I wanted to get that done because I wanted to see just how the overall uh, shape looked and everything. And uh, I think it makes a nice little, I mean, I'm not a nose warmer fan, but you know, it's a nice, easy to clench pipe. I think it's fine. And I wound up, I didn't know what to do with this square shank. So what I wound up doing was I turned it into an oval shank. You can see that. So that keeps enough of the meat on it. Um, I, I thought turning that into a circle was going to be too small. Certainly too small for the bulk of this pipe. But I think the opal shank works pretty well with this. And, uh, yeah. And it's not a perfect go on, you know. I'm just trying stuff out here. But uh, my plan is to, and again, this was a bit of acrylic that I had. My plan on this one is to pretty heavily rusticate it because some of the, the briar is just awful. You can see some. It's not really cracking. It doesn't go all the way through, but it's just wall surface walls and stuff. Um, so I'm going to pretty heavily rusticate it and give it a dark stain, maybe even a black stain. I think that'll look pretty cool contrasted with that stem. So, yeah. So... That's what I did yesterday, and uh, it was kind of neat that I could do this in one day because something like this takes me a whole week at least. Of course, I'm not working eight hours. Now, one of the challenges with this, and, and this was a lot of fun, was, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but this is not square. Um, so it's actually... Instead of being perfectly straight up and down, it's angled like that a bit. And it's also probably, yeah, it's crooked in this dimension. So to get this flat without and, and square without being able to mount it to a lathe because it's an odd shape, turns out to be a little bit of a challenge. You know, once I got the airway drilled and I got the mortise drilled, I had to make sure that that, that face was absolutely perpendicular to the mortise so that when the stem goes on you get this nice sort of seamless fit which I did do so I'm happy about that um, the way I did that I was quite pleased with uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pleased with myself I shouldn't be never a good thing so this tool I hope I can put these here this little thing is something that any pen maker will be familiar with. It's called a barrel trimmer. And the idea is when you're making a pen, you've got a wooden blank, you drill a hole through the center of it, and then you put a brass tube in. And that brass tube is going to hold the, the, the internals of the pen. So the pen is really a brass tube with stuff in it that, you know, lets you write. And then the wood is what you put around it. But you have to get the end of the wood perfectly perpendicular to that brass tube and flat so that when you put it together, the pen looks right. So this little device was designed to do that. So this tube, not, not tube, cylinder, well, it's got a little cutting edge here to clear glue out of the brass tube. But this mounts onto this cutter. You put it in a drill press or on a lathe. And then you move your wooden blank with the brass tube inserted up against this cutter that's spinning. And the cutter will cut away the wood and keep doing that until you get to the brass tube. 
And because this is in the brass tube, you know that that surface is going to be perfectly perpendicular to the tube. And I thought, well, heck, if I could use this, that'd be great. But obviously that's much too long and it uh, is not the right size for the mortise. So I said, well, heck, I got a metal lathe. I never use it for metal, but uh, I made this little aluminum bit. It's into the cutter sized for the mortise that I drill and it just goes right in and it was able to square off that end perfectly for me. So pretty pleased with that. And that's to me that's the best part of any hobby is when you get to come up with these challenges and spend time tinkering and, and, and building jigs or, or whatever it is that you do uh, to overcome the challenge and learning in, in the process as well. Learning new skills uh, learning new approaches, may, maybe coming up with a way to do something that uh, somebody else hasn't thought of yet. Rare, because uh, there's so many people that have been doing this for so long, but, you know. I don't think I've ever seen anybody use a pen barrel trimmer to square a mortise. Maybe I'm wrong. So this is performing really well. I am getting a little bit of a I hate to even say an off flavor. I, I don't think it's any different than I would get with uh, if this pipe were bare briar. Just, you know, you occasionally, when you're smoking a pipe for the first time, you're tasting something that's not the same. But this isn't, it's it's performing really well. I, I mean, I've got, it's got a really nice draw to it. So I'm happy with the drilling. No gurgle or anything. Hmm. One other interesting thing from a pipe making perspective is that this was a, a chemical dye. Um, so you're basically soaking the pipe in a, a solution that has tannins in it that accumulates into the grain and then you use a chemical that will uh, darken those to a dark blue black color and then you can uh, sand off the parts where it didn't penetrate as much and it reveals the uh, the grain structure. Uh, it's it's the same process that's used to ebonize wood by a lot of folks. And to do this one I basically painted on the tannic, the tannin solution and then let it soak in for 10 minutes, painted it on again, let it soak in for 10 minutes and I think I did 10 uh, rounds of that. For this one, I put a cork in here and I submerged the whole thing in the tannin solution and left it for 30 minutes. The logic was that it, you should get a lot more penetration into the wood and it should be darker, but oddly enough, you compare the two of those side by side. In this light, it's not going to be as apparent. No, it is apparent. Okay. Um, this one, which is the one that I just painted it on, is much much darker than this one so I don't know it's odd and I'm, I'm realizing the light when I bring it up close there is really making this look very very dark but you can hopefully see on the side here it's actually quite quite light it's just the um, the light isn't great here when I say it's quite light I mean it's got light spots in it obviously green is dark and darker than soaking it, which to me doesn't make sense, but it, again, it's all about experimenting, trying new things, and uh, having fun. So speaking of having fun, I've probably talked for far longer than I should, um, but that's okay. Somebody will watch it. You know, I, I made the video last week about the movies. Uh, those older, uh, like, 70s uh, horror movies that I was enjoying. For some reason, and I don't really care much about the analytics, I mean, I look at them just out of curiosity, and they always trend in the same general area, and that's fine. You know, I, I, I don't care 
how many views I get. I care that people are actually watching the video and commenting and things like that. And do please comment. I, I enjoy that. Sometimes I only have the time to give you a heart and a thumbs up, but I read them all. And uh, I, I really do enjoy comments. But for some reason, that video really didn't do well. And it surprised me. I, I, I thought that would be one that a lot of people would enjoy, but it was it was like in the basement in, in terms of number of views compared to other Sunday chats that I do. And I thought, that, that's kind of odd, and I don't quite understand it. Maybe it was the, the little title card. Maybe that put some people off because it had the, you know, the horror movies in it or something. I don't know. Maybe I should just stick to pipes. So this one I made very much about pipes. Be interesting to do the side by side comparison. Again, not that it matters, it's just another experiment. And I guess I'm just a relentless experimenter. So today, I believe the wife and I are going to go out. Uh, we got to deal with our, we got to stop off and pick up our taxes. They called yesterday and said they're done uh, just in the nick of time. We got to, um, do some shopping and things like that. So, And it's a beautiful day to go out and take a drive. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to do much else. But with that, I'm going to let you get off and do what you're going to do on your Sunday. I hope you have a fantastic Sunday and you're looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. So goodbye now.